There are a ton of interesting fans out there and I found another one. Meet the Squama 2505 made by Geometric Future, a company that slapped leather on top of a case and created one of the most aesthetically pleasing cases of this year. But today it's not about their cases, no, it's about the Squama. And don't mix up the numbers cause that 03, 05 and 01 makes one hell of a difference. Those are not the same fans, they are a lot more different than you might believe. So today it's all about the Squama 2505. In total there are three different versions of this fan, a 2505B meaning ARGB lit fan with a black frame, a 2505W so white frame and RGB and the 2505Y which is also the one we got in house. No RGB, no shenanigans, only an all black outer frame while the inside of the frame is colored in a beautiful yellow to almost a bit orange color. You can get each of those in either a single or a triple pack. And can we just give this box a second? It, it looks and it feels so good. It's like it has like a texturized front and it's, it's very well made. Inside we will find the three fans accompanied by a whole bunch of cables. Every Squama fan I have worked until now has about 15 centimeters worth of cable coming out at the frame side. From there you should use one of the included PVM extensions. However, because simply including one extension or multiple extensions would only solve a single problem, that wasn't an option. No, Geometric Future wants to solve every problem. So on the fan side we got a PVM splitter. And each of those PVM extensions is also a splitter. And you get three of those inside a three pack. The extension itself is about 50 centimeters long and at the left over 15 coming from the fan and we are looking at roughly 65 centimeters worth of cable. Which is already a lot longer than what I'm used to getting but it's the, the well thought through splitter overdose that surprised me. On each fan there is a splitter and a short one at that. So if you arrange the fans in a smart way, we can hook all of them to a single cable while pressing each fan's cable closely to the frame, thus hiding them away. From there we got one fan header left, as the last fan is not going anywhere. But we still got three splitters. So a total of four PVM headers left and three fans connected. Great approach, I love what they have done here. Very very good job. On a side note, if you would be going for an ARGB version, you would get one of those cute puppies here, Geometrics ARGB controller. Cool little thing, SATA powered, multiple ARGB out headers. However, Geometric Future uses those three pin whatever cables to get their RGB going. But with the included adapter, we are back to regular three pin ARGB. Let's now have a closer look at this fan. Each edge on the frame comes with a rubber glued to it for additional vibration absorption, which is great. On the outside of the frame we've got a bunch of those struts. I, I hope that's the correct word, but overall what, what they've done seems to be working because the, the outer frame is, is really stiff and it's not really bendable like at all. I, I would say this is pretty much on a Noctua level of quality. But it's on the inside where it's at. The inner side of the frame is built using Geometric Futures Aerodynamic Squama principle. A lot of words. And that's the stuff we already found on the box. The idea here is simple. With a frame made by just straight foam plastic, the tip of the blade will hit the outer frame, or no, the, the air, the air of the tip of the blade will hit the outer frame creating turbulences and whatever and those will then bounce back creating resistance for any new fan, for any new air coming in and, and so on and you have more noise. The solution for that is to have minuscule structures on the inner side of the fan frame that prevent the air from bouncing back and, and heck if we are at it let's also slap some of that onto the wings. Geometric Future is not the only company out there doing this. Noctia does the same thing, they just call it inner surface microstructures and their approach is mini triangles instead of hexagons. So yeah, it's it does make sense or at least if I would say if premium companies do it for a reason, the reason is probably valid. But ignoring its functionalities for a second, this creates a hell of a beautiful fan. I love how it looks, I love the non-RGB yellow color scheme, this is clearly my thing. But back to the functions. Between all of the available Squama versions, the main difference would be the fan wing design. A Squama 
2505 is coming with nine quite short and just slightly bent wings. It looks a bit like a mixture from a Noxia NFF12 and Arctic F12. Anyhow, this thing is built for pressure. With a top speed of 2000 RPM, the Squamma 2505 is capable of pushing up to 91 CFM at 4.28 mm of H2O. Those are crazy high numbers for a 2000 RPM fan. But let's try them ourselves. In a hybrid test, while spinning at max speed, the Squamma 2505 managed to keep the CPU at 43.9 degrees C, placing it right next to monsters like an Arctic P14, ARGB and the Lightwing high speed of Fantex T30 in performance. Not bad so far. On the noise to performance chart, however, we can see that having this type of crazy number does come at the cost of noise. A lot of it. However, it seems that this is headroom. As soon as we lowered their fan speed, they started to mix in with other fans like the Nokia NFP12 Redux or the Be Quiet Soundwing 3. Compared to the standards, they do outperform Arctic's F12 by a margin, and compared to the P12s, they just couldn't compete with the P12s at their max speed, but as soon as you lower them down, the Squamas took the lead. Another interesting comparison would be the Noxia NF F12. Both of those fans have insane static pressure at the cost of a fan blade design that produces a lot of noise. And compared to those, they absolutely won in both max and noise to perform. However, we are trying to find the best fan on this graph. And although the Squama are well within the center, they still have quite the gap to the very best of the best. So where does this leave us? From an optical standpoint, this is my stuff. I love the design, I love the orange, yellow and black mixture, I love how the inner side of the frame looks like, especially with those hexagons and that curve and everything is freaking amazing. But that is design and design is up to you. For the build quality, however, I would put them right next to Nokia. The fan is very well made, no doubt there, and the included goodies are surprisingly useful and well thought through. The only thing that worries me a bit is that the fan is rated with a lifespan of about 40,000 hours. Noxia, for example, comes in at 150, and Be Quiet Silent Wing 4s have 300,000, though Light Wings are back to 60k, and let's be honest, 40k rating is like letting your fan spin at full speed four and a half years straight. We are still good. Performance wise, it's a bit a yay and a nay. Sure, the Squama 2505 do not perform bad, they landed pretty high up on the chart, but the noise was a bit high and in the end they ended up somewhat in the middle. Not the worst noise to performance, not by any stretch of the imagination, but also not the best. Looking back at the specs though, these are clearly air pressure optimized fans, so I will put those onto the to-do list for the next round of best radiator fan. But as far as like a general use case, like the test that we are doing, as far as those use cases are concerned, maybe my expectations were just a bit too high after I saw the specs, but I don't know, I kind of expected them to be a bit better. They, they are not bad, don't get me wrong, and you won't do a mistake if you go for one of those, you will do fine, but I feel like this type of ultra high static pressure wing design just doesn't work nowadays. There is like nothing that requires this amount of static pressure, especially if it comes at the cost of noise. It didn't work out particularly well for the NF F12, and I feel like this one could also have been a tiny bit better if those wings were just bent a, a tiny tick more. But on that note, things are about to happen. But okay, this should be it for Geometric Future and their Squama 2505Y. At this point, a huge thank you to Geometric Future for sending them over, but if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Silent Wing 4 high speed. Pretty good fan. On a side note, we now have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get a new frontal Squama because apparently you can get replacements made out of steel and that would be really cool. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.